She went into Zechariah's house and greeted Elizabeth. Now as soon as Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child left in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. She gave a loud cry and said, Of all women, you are the most blessed, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Why should I be honored with a visit from the mother of my Lord? For the moment your greeting reached my ears, the child in my womb left for joy. Yes, blessed is she who believed that the promise made her by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord and my spirit exalts in God my Savior, because he has looked upon his lowly handmaid. Yes, from this day forward, all generations will call me blessed, for the Almighty has done great things for me. Holy is his name. And his mercy reaches from age to age for those who fear him. He has shown the power of his arm. He has routed the proud of heart. He has pulled down princes from their thrones and exalted the lowly. The hungry he has filled with good things. The rich sent empty away. He has come to the help of Israel, his servant, mindful of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, of his mercy to Abraham, and to his descendants forever. Mary stayed with Elizabeth about three months and then went back home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I'm sure you can't get out of your mind what is in my mind in the past week especially when we think of a place like Gaza in Palestine. The horrors we've seen on television and internet and the news we've heard day in and day out every second of the day of the horrors of bombs, of distrust and hate and violence, destruction of a city, a small little city, like a town with all its brutality and violence. And this is the very place where these beautiful events of the Holy Scriptures we have of the life of Jesus, Mary, Joseph, St. Anne and St. Joachim, the parents of Our Lady, Elizabeth and Zachariah, there's the pregnant mother going to meet another pregnant mother, Mary, meeting Elizabeth. She a young person, Mary, Elizabeth an older person. Pregnancy, whenever it comes, however it comes. The sacredness of life, the child in the womb leapt for joy. And all these beautiful phrases of every family that treasures family life. The grandparents seeing the children having their own children. And here we have a whole, whole ancestral line going back from Mary and Jesus and Joseph right back into the history of the Jewish race. Going straight back to, of course, our first parents, Adam and Eve, creating the image and likeness of God. And God intended that his family should be that holy and that close in fondness and love for all eternity. And then suddenly, sadly, there was the gap. And the gap came because 
of disobedience to God at the very beginning. Our first parents were not happy with God's beautiful paradise, but wanted more. They wanted not so much more, they wanted to be God themselves. And in doing that, of course, they were out of their depths. Only God can be God. We can be imitations of God in the fact he's created in his own image and likeness. So there's a wonderful, beautiful connection between God and mankind. But as soon as we try to cut off from the source of life, then we've seen the horrors that Jesus experienced also. Mary and Joseph had to flee into Egypt to escape a, a crazy leader who wanted to destroy the, the Redeemer. And Jesus escaped, but the Holy Innocents that we celebrate after Christmas, they were the first example of vile cruelty and brutality. What does it remind you of? It reminds you of Gaza today. So this terrible break between what God wanted for his family and where sadly each one of us can go away from that ideal with our own greed, selfishness, pride. We can cut ourselves off from all that's good. And so in this Mass today I want you to think about your own family life. Whether it's in Gaza, where we're seeing the breakdown of the whole infrastructure of family, of buildings, of homes, grandmothers and grandfathers totally broken. Some have lost 10, 15, 20, in one case 40 members of the family have been destroyed only this last week. What sadness and sorrowing. And Mary, of course, took that on when she said yes to becoming the mother of God. And indeed, Simeon reminded her in the temple, a sword of sorrow would pierce her soul. And we think of the desolation. There's Mary carrying the son of the eternal father, and yet she'll go through all the wickedness and the horror of pretending that God doesn't exist and we're trying to live our lives without God's influence. And so that terrible tension is in every one of us. Doing what I want, my agenda, my, pro, uh, my plans for the future. Every day we should get on our knees and praise the Holy Spirit as Mary indeed experienced the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came upon her. She was to have the Son of the Eternal Father, the Father, Son and Spirit united with Mary. And that is the home. They're the ingredients for any home that God is in the center of it and not the outside, not pushed to a sky or a, an image of God as an old man in the sky with a beard, whatever images we might have of the, the Father, the intensity of life and energy, every aspect of life is in God, lived in Jesus on our planet, in the very place where we're seeing such breakdown and turmoil. History is very important because it tells us many lessons. But if we ignore history, we carry on as though nothing has happened. Mary and Joseph went through the agony of being migrants, fleeing from a terrorist, terrorist a leader, and many children were killed because of that. We had the horrors today of leaders in their selfishness and greed and wanting land and position and power um, just crush anything that's in their way. And that includes families, men, women, children, babies, elderly, sick, handicapped, can be thrown away. Bishop of Shrewsbury, Mark Davis, said during the week, as we're celebrating tomorrow, Monday, 100 years since the First World War, 
when you think of the horrors of that First World War, and my God, you would have thought they'd have learned their lessons and not had a Second World War, but indeed they did. Very short time after that First World War, and those two world wars murdered, destroyed, at least, probably a lot more, but 130 million people died because of those two world wars. So this weekend, when you're thinking of those two world wars, and especially the First World War, 100 years, what have we learned in our century, our time, 21st century, 2014? What lessons have we learned? And as Mark, from Bishop Mark Davies pointed out, is it ironic the way we see all this destruction at the moment and think of the destruction of the First World War 100 years ago, that our parliaments and our leaders are giving us abortion, the killing of babies in the womb, far exceeding the six million Jews. There must be 20 million babies that have been murdered throughout the whole world in this century. 20 million babies have been destroyed. As a generation, we've got a lot to answer for to God, because we're part of all of that. And how much we need Our Lady's power and strength and love. She was helpless at the foot of the cross, seeing her only son battered and bruised and mutilated and destroyed to the last part of his body. She was helpless. She could do nothing. The apostles couldn't do anything. The people around couldn't do anything. The Romans were in control with this, the leaders of the Jews at that time who plotted and planned this horrendous death of Jesus. And so Mary knows the emptiness, knows the despair that any of us could experience at any time, and especially those people in Gaza at the moment, our hearts go out to them. It doesn't matter about the reasons. You go to war to try to protect life, to protect what you have against an enemy who wants to destroy it. And that seems to be ingredients of so much of what's going on there. But the Jews, the Muslims, the Christians, every single human person, no matter who you belong to, what your background is, what your ancestral line is like, you are creating the image and likeness of God. And our Blessed Lady particularly reminds us of that all the time. And she's there in every aspect of our lives. She's the mother of Jesus, so where she is, Jesus is there, of course, above all with the Holy Spirit, leading us to the Father. And so our connection with Our Lady daily is absolutely essential for every man, woman, and child. Babies being born, mothers pregnant with their children, natural birth to natural death. So abortion on one end, killing the child. How anybody could even think that that could be a good thing in any sense. The anti-life attitude is almost embedded in the laws, the present laws, assisting people to die, not because you feel compassion for someone who's sick, we've all got that, we must have that, and must care for the people who are sick and dying. Whether it's Alzheimer's, or whether it's cancer, or it's a result of a car crash, or any way in which suffering comes from. It needs care, palliative care, as many drugs as we can get to preserve and care for life to the degree we can. And that natural sense of care and love, not just for the healthy and those who are going to be the future, but every single human being, the future of every single human being is in eternity. Death is only a stepping stone from this rather very imperfect life to a final love of God for all eternity. And I think that's the root of many, many problems today. People think it really is all here. Where I am, where I live, the money I can get, the house I can get, 
the sports I can get involved in, my interests. My intelligence needs to be expanded and uh, fulfilled in every respect. What for? If it's for death, why trouble? If it's for eternal life, you want to do your best to prepare yourselves for eternity. And whether we like it or not, that's what we're heading for. And if there's another truth, there's no philosopher, there's no atheist, there's no theologian, there's no human being that's worked out the alternative to eternity. Eternity is a reality, as your life here at the moment is a reality, so eternity is a reality. And it's all part of the one thing. Once you're born in the image and likeness of God, like God, you can never be destroyed. Either by family problems, or terrible situations, or wars, or bombs, or terrorism, no matter how you can be destroyed. And it's the martyrs who realize that. And so, so many of our martyrs here in England who died for the faith, Maximilian Kolbe, who we prayed uh, with one of his prayers earlier on, who died in Auschwitz. However death comes to realize that you're, you belong to God. You are of God. To God you are to return. And Mary is the one who really shows every aspect from birth to death to resurrection to ascension. She actually saw Jesus after he was, was crucified in resurrection and she saw him ascend to heaven. She followed body and soul to heaven. So Mary isn't God, but she's one of God's chosen ones. We're all chosen by God. Mary had a special function to bring about the humanity of God, the humanity of Jesus, tied up with his divinity. And when you think of that early church, realizing this isn't just a human being, the faith of that early church, especially through the experience of the resurrection, Jesus wasn't just a great human being. Even the Muslims say he was a good prophet. Sorry, it's not enough. He was more than a prophet. He is with the eternal Father and Spirit creating this world and became one of it. And that's our Catholic faith that Christ was rooted in his Catholic family, the whole world. And he wanted to bring it back. And how much he's needed at the moment in the Middle East, the very land and place where he was, constantly needing, as every other country and land is in the world, needing that focus on life, death, on the cross, to resurrection. And so whatever agonies and pains that we experience ourselves or see in the world around us, you're on the road to Calvary. And all our Calvaries are different, but it's a Calvary. And on that Calvary, it's the warmth and love of family and friends where you're using your talents to make yourselves a better situation in the world and to make it a better world in your mind, in your conscience, in your thinking, in your spiritual life. And that's another point, isn't it? It's all secular life today. It's materialism, it's the body, forgetting the soul, the spirit, which makes us the most important people that we are. Unfortunately, we're treating each other as though we're tin cans to be thrown away after use. We do it to material things, we're now doing it to human persons. We've lost the sense of God, we've lost the sense of reality. Mary, Joseph, Anne, Joachim, Elizabeth Zachariah, John the Baptist, and all those personalities that you hear and read about in your scriptures throughout the year, take their lives on. Ask for their help. And any of the saints of the past who you love and are attracted to, Saint Ignatius during the week, he was very weak in his faith, became a soldier, 
a very intelligent man, great reader, noticed and realized the life of St. Francis and St. Dominic before him. He was encouraged by them. So saints can be encouraged by saints. You and I are destined to be saints. So let's enjoy those people who can be a good example to us. And especially today, of course, Mary, the mother of God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You'd like to stand for the creed, please. Credo in unum Deum. <laughs>